Hello and welcome everybody to my presentation on an empirical analysis of the costs of clone and platform oriented software reviews. This paper is a collaboration with Thorsten Berger from uh, Schamach University and University of Gothenburg in Sweden. And I'm from Magdeburg in Germany, from Otto von Gerke University. So what we have been concerned with in this uh, study is the effects and the costs of software reviews. So I think software reviews is pretty well known. It's one of the core fundamentals to improve software quality, save costs, but we have some problems with understanding the core strategies that actually exist. And we distinguish between two of those strategies that are clone and own development, which is one of the most prominent uh, strategies in practice. So most organizations in practice actually employ first clone and own. So they first basically develop a single variant and then they continue with developing more and more variants by building on this first variant. This is also well supported, for example, by Git or GitHub or related systems by their branching and forking mechanisms, basically creating a clone that is still somewhat referenced to the original variant. However, in practice, as you can see, that may merge quite heavily into different variants. Here, for example, you have five different variants. One may, some may be merged back into an other variant, but yeah, every variant basically implements some customer specific behavior, features, requirements. So each of those variants has some unique characteristics, some unique features that are specific to, to one single customer. In this whole strategy, because you don't have to do a lot of systematically reuse, um, but just you would just pick one variant and you adapt this to the new requirements, to the new features that are uh, asked for by the customer. So it's really cheap, it's readily available. As said, you can just branch uh, your system or you can just copy paste it, whatever. So however, a problem with that is that you will usually face a lot of ch maintenance challenges. As a concrete example here, consider that you introduce a bug in the second version here of this uh, yellowish uh, um, variant. And the problem here is that you basically propagate this bug to every variant that you clone from this variant as long as you didn't fix it. So all of the other three variants that uh, stem from this variant will have this bug involved as long as you didn't fix it. Obviously this also is more, gets more problematic because you have new features introduced and maybe some requirements changed in those variants. So this bug may behave differently in the other variants. So a fix that works on one variant may not work perfectly on some other variants. So we have due to the co-evolution of the different variants, additional maintenance burden here. Also, a big problem with that is that the developers basically lose the overview understanding. So assume you have like 1,000 different forks in your Git uh, or GitHub repository. Obviously, you are not aware of all the changes, all the customer-specific features that you have implemented there or that some other people have implemented there. So usually organizations face some maintenance challenges and some uh, understanding challenges in the process. And particularly, it's really hard to propagate some changes between those different variants. For example, cherry picking a feature or cherry picking, for example, a bug fix. And that gets really, really messy. It can get really expensive. And from the experiences we have from industry is that this is one of the main problems of cloning own. On the contrary, you can actually use a software platform. And a pl software platform should aim or aims to solve those problems that cloned own actually has. However, it is usually associated with far larger investments in the beginning. So when you want to develop a first product, and that's what most organizations do, you start with clone and own for the second product and for the third, because you're not yet sure that your product is worth a platform. So that's why most organizations start with clone and own. However, a platform aims to help with developing a whole portfolio of products. So you have a common code base that is implemented with a variability mechanism. And variability mechanism, for example, the C preprocessor, allows you to configure specific features in the platform to derive customized variants. So let's assume you have a database feature and you have, for example, a logging feature, and then in clone it own, you would have to copy paste those between different variants, whereas in the platform, you would just have the C preprocessor define macros and could just enable or disable those features within the configuration. And from that common platform, you basically derive the individual variants in contrast to cloning them. This is usually assumed to be more expensive in the beginning, so high investments, but pay off rapidly during maintenance and the more variants you have, because you have to only maintain one single platform and just introduce new features into this platform, also allowing you to have more products by every feature you introduce. However, we have some core problems here. That is, for example, that we just don't really have systematically elicited empirical data on the economics, on the costs of both strategies. So all of those maintenance challenges of those 
the challenges where the platform can help are basically gut feelings by most developers. That's also what practitioners usually tell. There's, it's really hard to assign costs in software engineering to specific activities, specific processes, technologies, and so on. So most organizations have some project-based budgeting, but they don't really can assign specific costs to specific activities. So they don't really know which strategy is beneficial in which scenarios. So we are basically missing this data, and that's what this study was actually motivated by, because we also got contacted by a company uh, that helped us with the study. And we, in the end, had three concrete objectives. First, we want to elicit reuse processes, so like cloned own and platform-oriented reuse processes that are employed in practice. As a second uh, objective, we wanted to identify the costs that are associated to the activities within those uh, reuse strategies. So for example, a specific activity could be bug fixing or designing a feature, implementing a feature, uh, coordinating between developers. And of those uh, activities, we wanted to understand what are the costs within each reuse strategy. So where should, for example, practitioners focus on uh, facilitating activities or tasks, and where should research focus on in supporting practitioners more. And as a last research uh, objective, we also investigated cost factors or cost drivers that impact either real strategy. So for example, we can consider the developer's knowledge as one cost factor, and, you can, and we try to understand to what extent more or less knowledge about the existing variants, just as an example, had impact on the costs in either real strategy. So to actually tackle those research objectives, we started with uh, an interview at a large organization namely uh, was Access AB in Sweden. And we had two contacts there, uh, two close collaborators who were really familiar with the whole platform engineering and access with how they did all the processes. So had a really good overview understanding. And they actually were really motivated to understand the costs of their real strategies more. So that's why we actually conducted the study because they particularly told us that most of their, um, most of their assessments are basically gut feeling and some educated guesses. So they don't really have data prepared for that. But that's where we try to help. And the first step we did was we conducted seven exploratory interviews to understand what are the processes, what are the cost factors, what are specific activities. So to get a first impression of how things work at Access, what do we have to investigate, what are the problems. Based on those insights, we then basically uh, defined the following study. Um, and that basically involved a second interview that was process definition, so that were five interviews that were for the first research objective where we tried to elicit the process employed in practice. And then we had 14 cost assessment interviews. So we did a total of 26 interviews involving 28 practitioners. So in two interviews, we had two uh, interviews at the same time each. So as I said, the first exploratory interviews were mainly for um, scoping the whole study, designing interview guides and so on. The second phase was for research objective one, where we want to understand process and activities. And the cost assessment phase was actually for the uh, second and third objective, where I tried to understand the costs and the cost factors impacting either uh, the activities and real strategies as an organization. For each phase, we basically derived individual semi-structured interview guides, recorded interviews, transcribed them, and uh, then used open coding-like methods to uh, synthesize uh, the results. However, to not only rely on one single organization and the insights from this one organization, we extended this analysis by conducting a systematic literature review for which we relied uh, first on a knowledge-based selection. So we basically collected papers that we knew of that were related and mentioning costs. Then we included uh, publications from so-called publication catalogs. So for example, the Software Product Line Conference Hall of Fame. So those are basic documents or online repositories that list a lot of papers on platform or cloned own engineering. Then we did a manual uh, search throughout several uh, uh, venues like ICSI, FSC, SPLC, and so on throughout the last five years to get up-to-date data. Then we employed backward snowballing on all the three previous searches to get um, to include more publications. And then we verified our sample that we got at this point against related work. So with related work, we mean other literature reviews, uh, introductionary books that have a lot of cases involved, and we try to verify how complete our sample is. We identified some additional works that we didn't have before. So we also, again, employed backward snowballing just to include as many publications as possible. And in the end, we identified 57 publications. As a remark here, most of the times, costs and economics are only mentioned as a byproduct to an actual technique that has been introduced or some experience report. Like somewhere in the text I mentioned, we reduce the number of bugs by 30%. So it's 
was a lot of publications, but actually few data points that we actually got out of them because they rarely mention those data, those data concretely. But we looked for those concrete instances to analyze it. So considering the results, I want to start with the process that is actually employed in practice. Not only at Access, we now went into some other organizations, discussed it with them, and it's similar in other organizations, some other publications involving our own mention that open source communities also employ a similar process. So it's, it's really interesting to see that this is apparently established. So what Access does is they basically get some new variant requirements and they basically first scope what uh, has to be involved in the variant. For that, they basically define requirements and here also define what features have to be part of the variant, which are here the circles with one, two and dots. So they somehow know, okay, this is the scope of the variant that has to be involved. So the second step is to actually derive a, a similar variant from the platform. So they basically try to find the variant from the platform that is closest to this new variant requirements. This may even be the full variant, uh, the full platform. So sometimes they just clone the complete platform. Uh, however, as I said, they basically clone a specific variant here. So they basically have a platform, but they still employ cloning, which was quite interesting because this basically means they integrate clone and own and platform oriented uh, reuse strategies, right? So then they basically design the features that they scoped before, they plan how to implement them, and then they implement those features on this cloned separated variant. So now they have basically variants that somehow fulfills those new variant requirements and they would be ready to release it. And over time, they basically have to quality assure that this variant um, is bug free or fulfills certain uh, requirements or is updated. So they have those usual uh, activities of quality assurance, bug fixing and propagating the bug fixes. So as you can see, they started with the platform usually for a new variant, then they derive some variant, clone it, put it into a separate fork or something, and then they basically evolve it. And here's a core difference between what is usually assumed in research, because they assume they either do a platform and just derive variants because they develop everything on the platform, or they do cloning, but don't have a platform. Access and many other communities actually have both, and they combine both. Sometimes they also develop new features on the platform, but for new concrete new variants, that's actually the most common process. And one really interesting insight is actually that the core difference is that they may integrate this variant simply back into the platform. Um, some interviews stated that they want to do this as fast as possible for really established features that they want to have for a lot of variants. So most of the variants are basically integrated camera software in the software platform. And they basically want to integrate this as fast as possible, which is really reasonable because the longer you keep it outside of the platform, the more divergence you have between platform and the variant. So it's harder to integrate. However, not all variants will be reintegrated. So particularly for like new businesses, like really innovative things, they are usually not sure whether they want to integrate it. So they keep it out of the platform. And that is really cloned own based research because then they have really independent clones that are potentially never reintegrated. And some of our interviews actually stated that this was really painful to then recognize, yeah, you know what, we need those features from those like years long co-evolving variants and now it's really painful to trying to reintegrate this into the actual platform that is used for most other variants. However, they also told us if, they, if you're really fast and you have continuous integration, then it's really low effort to integrate this. So those are really cool insights, some confirming existing beliefs, some actually contradicting uh, existing beliefs. However, the most interesting finding, and that is something as I found recently for some other projects, some other organizations too, but not so much assumed in research. So research still assumes more either platform or cloned on engineering, but we actually find that in practice, most organizations employ combinations of both and both strategies in parallel for the same set of uh, variants. The differences actually are in how and what activities they perform. So for example, the integration is a unique activity that is basically getting back into platform engineering but there are also differences between the activities to which I will come soon. And as a remark, we actually use those insights and some additional literature experience reports that we were aware of to create the actual round trip engineering process model that we published uh, just some weeks ago at uh, SPLC 2020. So if you're interested in understanding those processes in more detail, also from other organizations, um, I can recommend seeing into the, looking into that paper. However, let's look into the costs now. So for the costs, I will show you some snapshot snapshots of our data. So this is far from complete here. 
And here on the left side, you basically see the cost of developing a variant in percentage. So each activity basically got a percentage and our interviews had to assign, yeah, from all the development costs we have for a new variant in platform engineering or cloned on engineering, I, I think that many percentage go into uh, this activity. So this is basically an expert-based estimation. And here I just show the three activities of designing features, planning the implementation of the feature, and then implementing the feature. And you can see that, especially for the designing features, the costs for platform engineering, which are here in blue and always on the right side, um, are higher, also on average, which are the uh, dots in the, uh, in the plot. And particularly for designing features and implementing features, we have high outliers to really, really high costs. So like for implementing features up to over 50% of the cost for developing variant just go into implementing the feature. And for clone and own, it, it's usually less and it's also less distributed. So they are more concise. So this basically indicates that most of our interviews at Access assume that clone and own seems to be easier to design and implement new features on. Whereas the platform apparently requires more effort into designing features and then actually implementing the features. Planning the implementation, like uh, who should be involved, what developers, uh, how to structure this, is, is similar between both. So as said, we try to improve this data by adding data from other organizations with our literature review. And here you can see this, a snapshot of this data only for platform engineering. And here you again see on the left, uh, see the effect size and percentage, uh, whether it's increased or reduced costs. And for example, for developing feature, the left uh, entry, we can see that we found five data points and all of them say developing a new feature is more expensive. And that aligns well with our data from uh, Access. So that's really nice because it, this actually confirms our data. However, developing a variant where we find nine data points is always mentioned with reducing the costs up to really drastic uh, amounts. Because you can basically develop any new variant within a matter of a second just by compiling it from the platform. So one concrete statement here, for example, regarding this is, yeah, for that, uh, for a platform, you have to basically design the features to be reusable by other variants and within the platform. Whereas you don't have to do this at all for clone and own if you don't want to. So core insights here is that we found a lot of data that confirm a lot of uh, hypotheses on software use. For example, that software use heavily depends on a platform. So if you want to be successful in software use, a platform is the way to go or some extent of platform and developing a reusable features is more expensive, among others. However, we also found uh, the refutation that propagating bug fixes seems to be more expensive in platform. So usually it's assumed to be more expensive in cloned own as they're motivated, but we found the quite contrary. Also some inconclusive results where you need some more studies like coordinating between teams and developers seems to be equally expensive, whereas, whereas it, it, where it is assumed to be more expensive in a platform actually. So, and finally, to go into cost factors, again, only a snapshot of the data. Here with the triangles, again in blue, are platform data and cloned own is here in uh, greenish and circles. And in the middle between those, directly on the gray lines, is basically uh, the average between the data posts. And we see here the delta, which is the difference of new code you need to develop a variant and the reuse, so the code you can reuse for a variant. And on the left, you have an increase in the cost and on the right, you have a decrease in the cost. So for example, the more you can reuse, the more it decreases costs for cloned own and for platform engineering. However, for platform engineering, even more. So we basically tried to understand and found quite some differences between different cost factors for each strategy, depending on our interviews uh, experiences. And also again, confirming several of the insights with uh, data from the literature. However, some really interesting insights are basically this one here. Um, this is basically this outlier for cloned own on the reuse level where it says it increases costs actually, which, which was really surprising to us. And this interview basically said, yeah, if we use cloned own, we have to remove a lot of stuff and this is actually quite affordable. On the other hand, um, we also have found some contradiction of this assumption that cloned own has independence and it's easier to actually get into new markets because some of our interviews said actually we, oh, without the platform, we couldn't develop those complex products we need to get into those markets. So again, we found some confirming uh, data for our hypothesis, and we found some data that refutes or uh, is inconclusive regarding several established hypotheses. And this is particular for like innovative variants get you faster into markets and yeah, clone it own, they were found inconclusive because it's set to improve quality, but it also faces quality challenges. And as a brief conclusion, 
we provide a set of systematically elicited empirical data on the cost of software reviews. We confirm many established procedures on software reviews that we did not have actual data before. We found seven new procedures which we, for which we found only inconclusive results. And most interestingly, we found three procedures that for we found only refuting data for three procedures, which are there's no strict separation between cloned own and platforms. Bug propagation seems to be actually more challenging in a platform than it is for cloned own. And platforms can actually in, uh, facilitate innovation and not only cloned own can do that. So, however, as a final man, uh, message and the key insight that we have using some kind of platform like reuse, so for example, using clone and own with some change propagation framework or some advanced technologies for for example, continuous integration and so on, is always more helpful and has more impact on reducing costs than pure cloning has. However, pure cloning also has its benefits. Thank you very much for your attention.